Okay, in this video, we start off talking about area. Now, hang with me because I know that you know the formulas for area, and this is going to be a lot of review for you. But, hey, sometimes that's a good thing. So, we'll start off with the easiest uh, shape to find an area, and that would be a square. Yes? And a square, as if it's given by one unit, by one unit, and of course, the area of this would be one square unit. And it makes total sense. So, and if that happened to be uh, a larger square, then let's say if it was four units by four units, well, they would all fit in there. And you know, and I know, that this would turn out to be cross hatching this all out, would be 16 square units would fit in to there. And generally speaking, the area of a square is of a square is equal to s squared, where s is the side length. Great, fantastic. Well, let's just move on. After that, the most logical place to go would be, for me, I would say, like a rectangle. And a rectangle is very similar to a square in that, that it is equiangular and every angle is going to be a right angle. And whatever this side length is and this side length is, you can divide it up into and you, what you will find is that the side, we'll call this the base. I am going to call this the height. Some of you might make length times width in third grade. But we're going to move on and we're going to say base times height. And I'm going to use the word height in the special way, in the definition of height that we did earlier. That a height is the measure of an altitude. So, and an altitude is a line segment that goes from a vertex perpendicular to the opposite side. And you'll see that that makes perfect sense that that could be height. So, of course, the area of a rectangle. would be given as base times height or just BH is equal to area. Fantastic. Well, we need to think about these in terms of that. Now, what's the next possible shape? And now, many of you might think that triangle would be the next shape. But triangles are a little bit diff difficult because there's a half involved and things like that. So I'm going to talk about, uh, instead of a triangle, I'm going to talk about a parallelogram. So in a parallelogram, we will have uh, this side, the opposite sides are parallel. And you know all from previous uh, conjectures that the, alternate, uh, the opposite angles are congruent. And what we're going to do is make this rectangle into a shape that we already know, either a square or a rectangle. Every rectangle I can make into some kind of people cut it up into squares and figure it out that way. But every parallelogram, I could also do the same thing. And the one way to do that is to draw the altitude to this triangle right there. That's, of course, the height. And now, if I can take that piece, since this angle, these are parallel, I can actually cut that off. And I have conveniently create this. And I've cut it off along the height. And you'll see that, of course, I can just translate this one around, putting it right there. And of course, it will fit. It will it will always fit. This angle matches this angle because that was the opposite angles right there. I cut it off at a right angle because my height was a right angle there. And so now what I have is these sides are parallel, this angle is perpendicular, that angle is perpendicular. Oh, these are congruent because those heights are congruent. I've got a parallelogram where opposite sides are congruent and the angles are congruent. I've got actually a rectangle. So the area for a parallelogram matches the rectangle. A equals base times height. Now, let's move on to triangles. Triangles, you might say, well, there's a triangle, and I know that it's going to be half of a rectangle. And indeed, 
you might be right. Because if I took the triangle, duplicated the triangle, duplicated, magic, bam, and then translated, rotated it over, I can fit them together to make a rectangle. But that's not always true. They don't always make a rectangle. You might say, well, because sometimes you have triangles that are not right triangles. Correct? So now what are we going to do? Well, we're going to do try to do the same thing. Duplicate it. And if, if, I, if I just reflect it, that's not what I want. Is that, or is that what I want? No, this side, let's look, look to make sure. I don't want to do anything tricky on you. This side is congruent to this side. This side is congruent to that side. That, indeed, is actually not a rectangle or a parallelogram. That's a kite. Okay, so let's see. There's a way of doing this. Uh, take it, and here's where we start. If I rotate 180 degrees, then I get it to look like this. And if I translate it this way, now let's look at that. That kind of looks not a rectangle, but let's see. These two sides have to match. These two sides match. These two sides match. So I've got opposite sides congruent and opposite sides congruent on, of a quadrilateral of opposite sides. This indeed is a parallelogram. Well, we have the, air, the formula for parallelogram. The formula for a parallelogram is nothing more than base times height, right? But if I only want the triangle, well, we're going to take that and we'll cut that in half, giving us the area of a triangle. Now, I want to just review just one, one time real fast what I did. Rotate it. 180. Look, I can translate it this way too. And once again, not the same parallelogram, but yet a parallelogram. And it would be base times height. Now, where is the height? Well, of course, that is going to be definition of height, vertex to uh, a line segment vertex from vertex to the opposite side perpendicular. So there's my height. And then divided by two. Fantastic. All right, for trapezoids, I have started off with the trapezoid. It's just a nondescript trapezoid where the bases are parallel, and that's it. I don't know anything else about this trapezoid. However, I will let you put a height in there. There is a height, so I'll, I'll, I know that there is a distance from a vertex perpendicular to the opposite side, and we'll call that a height. I have a feeling that's going to come into play. Well, how am I going to do this? Can I make this into one of the shapes already done? Well, that's a triangle. I could probably cut that a triangle, but I don't know where it actually cuts. So I better deal with this. Uh, the whole thing is one. I know the length, I can find the length of this base, this and this also the base. Those are the two things I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you how big this base is and how long this base is, right? I'm not gonna necessarily tell you how big that piece is right there. So we will attack this the same way as, as before. We will duplicate it, rotate it, 180 degrees, translate. And indeed, you can see that now I see that this one, okay, that one matches this one. That's B1. Here's B2. And what shape do I have? Well, these two ends still match. These two si opposite sides are congruent of a quadrilateral. We've got a parallelogram. The area for parallelogram is base times height. So this giant parallelogram would be base times height. But I don't want the giant parallelogram. I want only the red section. So the whole thing is base uh, 1 plus base 2 to, times the height. But if I only want the red section, that you would cut this in half. And that is the area of a trapezoid. And then finally, the one that you might not have thought about, we are going to make a kite. And so I have constructed a kite here. Actually, with my construction paper, I didn't construct it. Uh, this side is congruent to this side. This side is congruent to this side. And magically, you can already see that is one of the diagonals. That's your vertex diagonal running right there. I cut it along the vertex diagonal. 
So I am going to once again cut it up so and to make a shape that we've used before. Let's see, cut it up. And I want the shape, the sides to match. So I want that side to go there. So if I'm not careful, it makes another kite. So I need to do something such as this. And I better put it on an angle so you can see the whole thing. And a nice giant kite is there. And I'll show a little, there we go. And you will see this once again, this side congruent to this side, this side congruent to this side. Another parallelogram. Parallelogram turns out to be the magic formula on this. Now, let's let's talk about the side lengths. What are the side lengths? Well, this one was my non, excuse me, my vertex diagonal. And where did that other one come from? Let's see. This was here. Oh, well, this one right here, in a kite, the diagonals do intersect perpendicular. And this is not the whole diagonal, but rather half the diagonal. So it's like the diagonal divided by 2. We'll call that diagonal 1 divided by 2. And then if we're going to find the area of this parallelogram, it would be no more than this diagonal divided by 2 multiplied by this diagonal. So, But we don't want that. Not ultimately, that would be the parallelogram. We just want the kite. So, uh, actually, oh no, I do want the parallelogram, don't I? I? I do want, sorry, I want this diagonal divided by two. Sorry, the kite area. It's just the, simply the area of these two sections. I'm right. Uh, D1 divided by two multiplied by the other diagonal right there. But I can do a little bit of algebra, make that prettier. That could be D1 times d2 divided by 2. And there is your area of a kite. Now the magic thing you got to remember is uh, those squares that we talked about. They actually are can use the same kind of formula because it can be true for the square. So I can use the same formula to find the area of a, of a uh, square also. The diagonals multiply two together, divided by two. That's what's fantastic. And here it goes. I have the problems for you today. I've got three here. Here we go. You need to find the area of the shape given. This is, it's got a side of seven, a side of five, uh, a perpendicular segment to both sides right there at 6.5, grand total length of 10, Maybe, let's go ahead and put units of inches on there. So those are inches, the two marks of the inches. Uh, this is the area of this shape here, and we'll, we'll put one mark, one tick mark means feet. So there's feet, and there is uh, another triangle with a 12 foot base, and it says the area is 56.4 feet, square feet. Find out what X is. Good luck, see you tomorrow.